very much, Matt. Now, somehow in all of the baton passing, we managed to skip over Nick. So we're now going to go to Nick's speech. But I'm going to ask a, a favour of everybody. Nick's speech requires people to heckle him throughout and for him to deal with it. Rather than actually uh, just picking a few people, we are opening the floor. So at any point, if you want to heckle Nick during his speech, feel free. So, on that note, over to Nick. I will quickly point out that this is heckling on the speech which I have just done, which uh, was entitled Don't Break the Raw. And I was trying to encourage all of you to not follow the raw vegan cleanse and diet. So, basically, over to you, somebody asked me a difficult question. What about the planet? Oh, okay, Tim, what about the planet? That's a very good consideration. And yes, going vegan is in fact very, very good for the planet. You've got to ask yourself whether it is worthwhile being a raw vegan when you have to have fresh fruit and vegetables, most of which have to be flown into you in the dead of the winter. Therefore, there'll be issues as far as fuel miles are concerned, and it won't necessarily provide uh, very well. We're only really able to be vegan within an industrial world because of the just-in-time delivery system, which relies very heavily on petrol chemicals. Russell. Was that? Hmm. Okay, Muriel. Nick, so in summary, are you for or against this vegan raw diet? I, I would say two things. First and foremost, it is a very good therapeutic tool, which many people suffering from very serious diseases have been able to use successfully for themselves. However, I don't think that one can actually incorporate it into one's life. If you're going to socialize with people, you're going to meet with them and eat with them and drink tea or beer with them or whatever. And you certainly cannot just um, turn up and say, no, I'm not going to eat your wonderful roast dinner at the Randolph Hotel. Instead, I'm just going to bring some carrot juice and I'm just going to have that. You certainly won't be able to fit in socially. And as far as affordability is concerned, it's lacking on that side of things too. And the vast majority of people are you know, struggling to make ends meet at the best of times. And you can't afford to live on 20 to 30 pounds a day cash wise if essentially you've only got 10 or 15 pounds a week to feed yourself. Uh, okay, unanticipated. <laughs> well, yeah, unanticipated. Now, you, your argument, one part of your argument was that this lifestyle is only available to those who are time rich or cash rich. Now, frankly, I think that's rubbish. I'm sure it's true if you're going to speak to the designer, mass produced products sold through Whole Foods or trendy stimulus in Shoreditch or wherever. But if you've got just a little kitchen garden in your small yard, you can grow a lot of that stuff naturally. Sure, you have to attend to it, but it's not going to take over your life, and it's going to cost you almost next to nothing. And you've got your raw vegan lifestyle there. That's a very interesting point, but unfortunately factually inaccurate. If you had a garden of the average size we have in the UK, that would probably feed you for maybe about two days because you've got to be getting through somewhere in the region of one kilograms worth of fresh green leafy vegetables a day. Now that's a rather large garden for all of your cabbages and all of your whatever it is you're going to grow and as far as fruit is concerned you certainly won't be able to get the calories for an entire year's worth of eating off a allotment or a garden. You would have to find some way of bulking it up with other sources of carbohydrates. If you're considering that in the West, we regard about a 2,000 kilocalorie a day diet is what is required. You certainly won't be able to get anywhere near that. Now, there is an argument to say that after a process of purification, you could possibly just live on something like 500 kilocalories per day. But that's only under rare circumstances after many years of living a lifestyle. So I really don't think that's even remotely tenable. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Yes, Matt. If I was going on a first date with someone, I don't know, like Kayla or Henry, I think like the worst thing for me would be being on that diet because it gives you a lot of gas and a lot of toilet <laughs> trouble. And I think it'd be really embarrassing for me. Well, that's a very good, very valid point. It is said in the early days of the raw vegan diet, then you, yes, you will have that problem. However, part of the lifestyle is to forgive the coarse language, to shove a tube up your bottom. Namely, to give yourself a regular colonic irrigation in the form of enemas in order to clear out any of the mucoid plaque and debris which is inside yourself. And so you've got to be very healthy in terms of your anus 
and also have a lot of control and time. <laughs> because if you, if you develop a routine of colonic irrigation at home, it can take you about two hours because you've got to do the colonic itself and you've got to disinfect the bathroom afterwards. So that's another time constraint. Okay, Russell. Yeah, just in follow up to that, um, I've never researched doing your own colonic. Uh, are there any kind of health concerns that come with people doing that themselves? Well, yes, there can be damage to the anal sphincter itself, and you can also open yourself up to forms of infection under some circumstances. Skilled people probably want to use distilled water or purified water via reverse osmosis if they've got, again, the money to be able to do so. Other people, on the other hand, go to a professional colonic irrigation therapist, but that can cost you maybe £100 a time and isn't necessarily something which is affordable. However, it is a very relaxing experience. I would recommend you get a little old lady to shove a tube up your bottom if you can afford it. One more. Okay, Emmanuel. What did your diet consist of? These days, I am predominantly vegan, but I do tend to have animal products uh, maybe once or twice a fortnight. Uh, and I do eat some enjoyable trash food as well. I'm not the most healthy living person in the world and I have a very serious caffeine and nicotine habit. So I'm not a person to learn from and I'm certainly not some great healer. I mean, I'm in fact quite pathetic. One more. Okay, Carla. Really, you're just a flexarian, aren't you? <laughs> yes, uh, that's another reason why I'm telling people not to do this damn diet. I mean, it's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, have, I have tried it for a short period of time and essentially it's no fun at all and you can really get bored of eating romaine lettuce and cucumber, it's disgusting. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we'll stop there and let's say anyone's got a final quick one. No, we've got a red light so I think we'll stop there unfortunately. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Nick, and thank you to all of our speakers.